Buongiorno a tutti, grazie al nostro ospite per l'organizzazione di questa conferenza. E questo dialogo è necessario per garantire l'evoluzione del settore. E il mio italiano è pessimo, e quindi in questo momento voglio passare all'inglese. Uh, so uh, I'm going to present, uh, I will not present the portfolio of our company, rather I will speak about some of the things we're looking uh, uh, for the future and uh, also I'm going to speak about where we come from and how that aligns with, uh, with the industry. I very much liked the uh, quote that uh, Colonel Mar uh, Maroso uh, said about uh, experience, uh, experiment, and expectations. I think that that uh, is a very good uh, way of uh, talking about uh, Boeing and in situ. Uh, we come from a 20-year uh, experience. Uh, we were a, um, a uh, garage company, if you will. Very three smart men coming together to uh, go into the robotics of, the, uh, of, uh, of an aircraft. Uh, first, to uh, try to go into weather systems and collect some data. And uh, later, uh, when uh, Boeing saw what we were doing, they had a idea of what, uh, what and how to employ our aircraft. And um, I'll speak about a little bit of that, uh, of that uh, transition and that uh, experience. A little bit of uh, in situ uh, snapshots. Uh, right now, we have around 840,000 hours of operation. Uh, that is the hours that we can count uh, as an ISR provider. That doesn't count uh, the hours of our uh, customers. Uh, so, bottom line, a lot of experience uh, which has helped us uh, find a way into the new uh, industry uh, where regulation and safety plays a big part. Uh, here in Europe, we have eight customers, seven of which are operational. Uh, we have a great uh, vein uh, helping our customers in missions such as ISAF in Afghanistan and also in CTF-151 in the Horn of Africa. Uh, in the maritime environment, we accumulate approximately 40,000 hours. Uh, that is operating from the ship and landing back in the ship. So here's where I, uh, I would like to echo the uh, quote from uh, Colonel Massaro Maroso. Uh, we began as a very small company. Our first uh, feat was crossing the Atlantic back in 1998. We uh, took off from uh, Canada and we landed in, uh, a, uh, in uh, Scotland. Uh, that obviously was a uh, feat that called the attention of many big companies, one of them being Boeing. Uh, I believe that our company has been uh, marked by innovation uh, and when I say that, I say it because of the fact that uh, when we were trying to help uh, the uh, collection of weather data, uh, we came across the fact that the best places to uh, conduct such operations is in the maritime environment. Uh, so we were uh, challenged by uh, how to operate a UAV from a small ship and be able to uh, conduct operations to and from that ship. Uh, that's when the first innovation came through. That was the Skyhook. That's the second picture you see there in 2001. Basically, we fly the aircraft towards a rope and we uh, catch the aircraft in that rope. That obviously uh, presents a lot of uh, opportunities for uh, expeditionary uh, missions as well as operating from uh, unimproved uh, terrain and ships. Uh, the other uh, milestone that I would like to touch base is uh, 2004. So we were tasked by the Marine Corps, the U.S. Marine Corps, to go and uh, to sell them a system so they could go to Iraq and, and, uh, and have some uh, bird eye view of the battle uh, terrain um, back in Fallujah. So when we were faced with that challenge, uh, there was no time to train uh, the uh, Marine Corps. 
So what we did, we created a service system. Basically, we created a business model where we sell pixels by the hour. So that was the second innovation where we created a new model that was able to offer the end user uh, the data they needed without the capitalization of training or equipment. Uh, then uh, in 2008, Boeing uh, bought us, and obviously uh, that's a great uh, advantage for a small company that all of a sudden goes from being a garage company to having 100 years of experience uh, in the back. Uh, that gave us access to technology, to research, uh, and to a lot of experience. So, uh, as opposed to presenting the portfolio, I'm going to speak about what we're doing to uh, try to meet the new requirements as they relate to uh, compliance. Uh, since we have been in business, we have been responding to a lot of uh, oper uh, urgent operational requirements. And that, by the term itself, should, uh, should denote the fact that the end user is not concerned with uh, safety of flight, is not concerned with compliance, they're concerned about realizing their operational mission. Um, so uh, after, after 840,000 hours of experience, uh, we decided to take the leading step uh, to try to meet uh, many of the new requirements that are being levied by the uh, awardingness uh, agencies, uh, especially in the military environment. Uh, so. We, as you can imagine, we're talking about a 24 uh, kilo max platform. So, being such a small uh, platform, and I think that here in Italy and Europe, we're considered to be a mini UAV. Uh, being challenged by weight and size uh, presents both challenges and opportunities. Challenge because uh, how to deliver a capability uh, and reliability with such a small aircraft. And opportunities because it puts our engineers uh, in an innovation path to try to solve these challenges. Uh, and that's the case of Scandigle 2. Uh, we uh, went out and uh, made a uh, request for proposal uh, to the major uh, engine providers uh, in the small category uh, for, uh, for an aircraft. And uh, uh, from the ground up, uh, based on over 2,000 uh, requirements, we came up with a uh, new engine uh, that, as opposed to our previous engines, uh, will have a 900-hour uh, life, uh, life uh, which will allow for two overhauls. Uh, that uh, solved the equation or the, uh, the challenge of reliability, uh, being able to perform uh, search operations and continuous operation without having uh, malfunctioning the engine. Uh, as you can imagine, again, a very small platform, we don't have room for redundancy. I only have one flight control system, I only have one engine, I only have uh, one avionics. So uh, it's very important that what we have there is sufficient, reliable, and allows for uh, carrying payloads that will uh, solve the operational needs of the customer. Uh, so ScanEagle 2 will be available next year. Uh, the other uh, innovation that ScanEagle 2 brings is uh, a common architecture uh, Stanek 4586 compliant uh, uh, ground control station. And what that does, not only for the ScanEagle 2, but it does for the industry, is that by being Stanek 4586 compliant, we're able to all of a sudden start thinking about teaming, uh, teaming agreements on the operational side. In this sense, uh, I can have a unmanned, um, unmanned unman teaming agreement where we have the Scan Eagle flying, uh, and we also have, for example, the under, uh, underwater vehicle. And they're both cooperating to make sure that uh, the end user has total situational awareness from both air and, uh, and underwater. Uh, there's a specific uh, partnership that, uh, that Boeing uh, realized this year with Liberate Robotics uh, and that partnership is just one more step ahead of uh, making sure that our portfolio is synergistic. Uh, ICOM C2, which is our, our common ground control station, not only can operate as can Eagle, can also operate any other uh, unmanned vehicle that is standing for the 5 
these are some of, some of the specs of the uh, of the engine. Again, uh, being such a small uh, aircraft, we fly around uh, 4,000 feet. At that altitude, we can uh, provide uh, actionable intelligence to our end user because of the small uh, uh, engine footprint. Uh, we're very stealth, both visually and acoustically, at that altitude. So another thing that is very dear to uh, to us, uh, to Boeing and in situ, is to make sure that we are always innovating and we're always trying to deliver the best actionable intelligence to our customers. Uh, that being said, and I'm sure you all have heard about this, uh, the aircraft is just a truck. Uh, the aircraft is irrelevant. Uh, what matters is what the aircraft is providing via sensors to the end user. So we created a program office which we call, which we call uh, Payload uh, Directorate. And what we do is we go out and we start uh, trying and flying different sensors that can fit uh, in terms of uh, size, in terms of weight, and in terms of, uh, in terms of power consumption. And we have done around 100, 135 different uh, uh, experiments. Uh, many of them are operational nowadays. We have uh, had the pleasure to, uh, to fly Celex uh, Galileo Picosar uh, in our bigger aircraft, and we also have been uh, flying the IMSAR. Uh, synthetic aperture radar in Scan Eagle. Now imagine a 20 kilo aircraft flying a small SAR. I mean, that's incredible. And uh, we are doing this by making sure that we have uh, partnerships and we have agreements with, uh, with uh, industries worldwide. Not only from the US, also from Italy, also from, uh, from uh, many, many countries, uh, in, uh, so that we can deliver what the end user uh, needs. So another, because of the because of the fact that we're so small uh, in terms of uh, size, we have to think of how to uh, amplify the capabilities in a way that will not create more size and weight. Uh, so that means that there's a lot of synergy between uh, software and hardware. So this is uh, an example of a uh, capability we are going to roll out this year. It's called Vidar, and what Vidar does is that it incorporates a very small camera under the uh, UAV. It's a five megapixel camera, and it incorporates that to uh, uh, a holistic software that via uh, pixelization can detect uh, objects at 18 uh, miles from the UAV, and, uh, and, and it has a SWAT of 22 miles. So all of a sudden, a mission that will take 24 hours to conduct, uh, specifically a search and rescue mission, now takes only four hours because of, of the uh, because of the uh, synergies between software and hardware. This uh, capability, I see it extremely relevant in the uh, in the uh, situation now confronting uh, Southern Europe with uh, all the uh, migration. Um, it's a low cost uh, per hour capability uh, due to the fact that uh, it's a small system with a small footprint. Uh, it doesn't require too much uh, manning as well. So, for example, a operation of 300 hours a month of ISR with Scan Eagle only requires four people. So this I come to you, as I said before, it, it has a two-tier innovation. Not only is Stanek 4586 compliant, but it also, uh, it also tries to mimic the concept of the iPhone in the sense that we have, a, we have a software platform and we can accept uh, development kits or applications, if you will, uh, in order to maximize the capability. So I have two examples of this, um, this add-ons or, uh, or applications. One is a search and rescue app uh, where you install the app on the ICOMC2 and uh, the app uh, has uh, all the uh, accepted uh, standards for search and rescue patterns and uh, the app takes over the search and rescue operation maximizing the efficiency of the uh, search and rescue operation. Uh, the other app that uh, is also relevant is the RF app and that RF app is very important for critical missions. Uh, whenever you're going to carry a mission you, uh, you would actually rehearse that mission before you go live uh, so this app allows you to go into the simulated environment and understand uh, where the witnesses of the RF link 
will be present while conducting the mission. And what that allows for is for the end user to come up with mitigation strategies to ensure the success of the mission. Um, also, on the uh, Boeing portfolio, and going now from Mini to Hell, uh, not Hell Inferno, but Hell, H-A-L-E, uh, -E, uh, there's a, a concept or a, a demonstrator called Phantom Eye. Phantom Eye is considered to be a high altitude, long endurance platform. It stays five to seven days aloft. Uh, it acts as a, as a pseudo, pseudo uh, satellite. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it works around at 60, 60 to 70,000 feet. Uh, so that presents a very good uh, opportunity for the end user to have a pseudo SAT capability at a very, very uh, differentiated price. So uh, the uh, Phantom Eye uh, also will incorporate many of the new, uh, new technologies to include the hydrogen uh, fuel cell. Uh, this in order to uh, allow for the uh, endurance of five to seven days. Um, it can carry uh, a lot of uh, payload, 450 pounds, and that can allow for com relays, SIGINT, uh, and, and whatnot. One of the things seven to 10 days. Seven, thank you for the direction, over seven to 10 days of uh, endurance. So the other thing that uh, we're doing, and again, um, if you look at the past of uh, in situ, uh, we were extremely proficient at the uh, task and collection of, uh, of uh, data. But we were missing a little bit on the processing and the exploitation and dissemination of that data, which is very, very dear to the end user. Uh, in the past, we provided a data, that data went to a room, we never saw it again, uh, because we were not playing in that uh, market space. Now, uh, this year, we bought a company. It's uh, a UK, it was a UK-based company with uh, a site in the US. We bought that company because they have a superb capability in the uh, processing, exploitation, and dissemination of data. So now we hope to have a, a, a we can play on that uh, whole equation uh, because we believe that by controlling uh, front to end, uh, we're going to be uh, able to better help the, uh, the end user. So what these capabilities do in, the, in terms of tacit view, for example, that's something as basic as cursor and target, but it also allows you to uh, tag, uh, tag your, uh, your imagery, uh, your, your full motion video, by geolocation, by date, uh, make annotations, and what that allows you to do after you have uh, been able to accumulate uh, a, a robust amount of data, then you can go in, for example, with Catalina, which is a server, and start uh, looking for trends, looking for patterns, and being able to do a forensic ISR uh, in order to understand where the uh, enemy will be moving uh, forward in the future. Uh, so we are very uh, happy to, be, to have been able to buy this company, and now we are looking to make the synergies uh, needed in order to provide that full equation of TCPAD. So obviously one of our uh, core competency has been uh, deploying on ships and we have deployed uh, in, on ships from 20 meters all the way to uh, aircraft carriers uh, to include frigates, to include um, uh, corvettes and, and, uh, and other type of ships and now what this does is uh, for a, a, a corvette for example, a very small ship, uh, their, their uh, situational awareness is limited by their, uh, their Snoopy or their eyes uh, and their, uh, their AIS, for example. When they have a capability such as Scan Eagle or any other uh, UAV for that matter that can operate from that ship, uh, then all of a sudden they extend their situational awareness to hundreds of miles. And this allows for uh, planning, uh, strategic planning, tactical planning, and better resolution of, uh, of conflict at sea. So I, I, I want to end with a couple of examples. As you understand, uh, we dwell in an industry where it's very hard to brag about what we do because all that we do belongs to the end user. So we can only brag about it when we have uh, news releases uh, that are made by the end user. In this case, uh, when we deployed with the uh, Netherlands Navy, we had very two successful interdictions of uh, drugs. 
in the um, in the Indic Ocean, and they were publicized. Um, and that's great for us because that's something we can share with the public uh, to uh, better convey what this type of capability can do for a uh, for a small ship uh, belonging to a navy. Another one, another of, exam uh, of the examples was uh, in a deployment with the Canadian Navy. We also were able to uh, help in the interdiction of many, many ships uh, carrying illicit uh, drugs and whatnot. Um, and uh, we did this, uh, this was 2012. And then in the second deployment with the uh, Canadian, Canadian Navy, we also, uh, uh, again, were able to uh, make uh, differences uh, right away when we deploy with them. One thing I don't have here, and, and many of you may be familiar with the Unified Protector operation that was uh, Libya like three years ago. Uh, we were, we were uh, under the, uh, under the uh, NATO uh, with the U.S. Navy ship and uh, the situation in Libya was extremely dear. Uh, the cloud coverage and uh, uh, did not allow for bigger platforms to go out and get target acquisition. Uh, in this case, Predator was grounded because of the cloud co coverage and uh, we were able to go out and make sure that the uh, NATO commanders were targeting the right places, thus avoiding uh, casualties that were not necessary. So uh, again, a very small platform, very low cost, but extremely, extremely powerful. So that concludes my presentation. I think you're gonna be happy, General, because I'm giving you some time back, and uh, I do appreciate everyone's attention.